Hello folks, Eric here again. And uh, once again, I'd like to welcome you to our Thrifty Survivor YouTube channel. And uh, what I'm gonna do for you today is a, a quick review on the Alox seven piece cook set. Again, that's Alox, A-L-O-C-S. All right, folks, so uh, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and pull this out of the pouch that it comes in. And uh, you know, I'll tell you, it's a pretty nice little pouch. Just kind of keeps everything in place as a pouch is designed to do. And this is actually the base. Here you have that, that little 450 milliliter pot, pan, uh, or lid, uh, however you want to look at it. Okay, here's a spirit burner. And I'm going to kind of set this off to the side. The dish towel. All right, now here is the pot, the, the 0.9 liter or 900 milliliter pot. And I'm gonna kinda just set that on the floor or on the ground for now. This is your windshield. Okay, now I am gonna zoom in a little bit closer here in a little bit. And I'm gonna put this thing to use. And here is the base to hold the pan. Now, as far as assembling this thing, it's really pretty simple. First thing you do is you take the lid off of the spirit burner, drop the spirit burner onto the base, then you take the windshield, and here I'm going to show you some things. Now you've got these little, uh, uh, these little like rivets here. You got three of them, and I'm going to kind of move this closer to the camera so you can see it. You got these three rivets there. And what you do is you simply take your wind shield, you put that here. You got those little uh, those little locking grooves there. You put those uh, over <laughs> over the uh, the little tabs, and you twist, and it locks into place. Okay. Now I know that was a little bit out of frame. I'm gonna undo it here and do it again for you. You just basically. Put those little holes that are round on one end and a slot on the other. Put it over the round end and twist, and they lock into place. That way, you've got your spirit burner. It ain't falling out. It ain't gonna budge. Everything is nice and stable. This is your windshield, and of course, that's your base. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is unscrew the lid. <laughs> I probably should have done that before I put the thing together. So hold on. Here we go. Take the lid off. Now, one thing I do like about this spirit burner, and I'm going to move forward here once again, is it does come with the lid, and you got this really nice O-ring there, so that uh, when you're done cooking, if you got alcohol left, you just screw it back on there, and it ain't going to leak. So you can, uh, you're not going to waste any alcohol. All right, so here we go. Put this thing back together. Okay. Lock it into place. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil some water. So uh, let's go ahead and get some water. I'm going to fill it up to, let me see here, I'm going to fill it up to 16 ounces, and I'll, I'll be right back. Let me grab the water here. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead, put the lid on here, or the, the base, which will hold the pot in place. I'm going to grab my trusty Schrade pocket knife. <laughs> Use the uh, trusty ferro rod. You know what? I haven't seen anyone else do it this way, but I think a better way to start the fire is to strike it before you put the, the, the shield on. So here goes. All right, it's going. All right. 
It's just easier to get the thing ignited this way. Okay, it's locked into place. I'm going to turn this forward for you. Let's go ahead and put some water in here. And I'm going to fill it up to 16 ounces. And you may not see what I'm doing down here, but uh, a bug flew in there. Anyway, all I'm doing is I'm pouring some water in here. Okay, I got 16 ounces of water. Put the lid on. And let's see how long it takes for this to come to a boil. Now, needless to say, it's going to take a few minutes for the water to come to a boil. So, I'm going to share a little bit of additional information for you. If you can see in the front here, you got this opening. Now, that opening is designed, is there for a number of reasons. One, of course, is uh, it allows you to, if you've got a lighter, you can stick a lighter in there to, to light the, the spirit burner. Or, uh, you can also use this as a wood burning stove. Now, I have not seen a single video showing how to do that. So, uh, I plan on doing that for you today. So, you get to see more than what I've seen on this particular unit anywhere. So you just sit tight and I'll be right back. All right, folks, I just set the pot on the spirit burner and let's go ahead and start the time now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to keep it running. Uh, now, one thing I did not do, and I don't know if uh, you, probably some of you noticed, is I did not let the spirit burner come to a full bloom before I set the pot on it. So that may make this take a little bit longer than it would otherwise, but uh, what I like to do is always try to push things to the limit or, uh, if anything, give a disadvantage to whatever I'm doing a review to. Uh, so if there's any doubt as to whether or not this thing is efficient, uh, you need to take that into account. Anyway, I'm going to kind of move the camera down a little bit lower because I see that uh, it's a little bit on the small side here. I want you folks to all get to, to be in focus. So I'm going to try not to cut this out. So <laughs> you'll see me walk forward here and tilt the camera down and zoom in just a hair. All right, how's that? I think that's a little bit better. Starting to see some steam come up. Uh, I'd say we probably are about halfway through getting this to a good rolling boil. And uh, I'm not gonna stop until this actually comes to a good rolling boil. Uh, I expect it to take a, roughly about seven minutes or so. Uh, now what I like about this unit is everything is encapsulated into a single unit. You've got your stove, which can be either uh, actually, this will actually work with transia stoves also, uh, transia stoves rather, uh, and probably other alcohol burning stoves, uh, spirit burners, uh, whatever you want to call them. But this allows you to use a spirit burner or use this as a wood burning stove. Plus, everything is all encapsulated into a single unit. And uh, again, this is 0.9 of a liter or nine tenths of a liter. Uh, which is a pretty good size. It's not huge by any means, but uh, I'd consider this either a one-person or a two-person unit. Uh, it is fairly lightweight. Like I said, it's, uh, it comes to 813 grams in overall weight. Uh, now, something else I've done, <laughs> uh, and I'm just going to be right up front with you, I personally don't like to cook food in aluminum. Uh, now, I understand this is anodized aluminum, and a lot of people consider that to be safe. But what I've done, and I'll be showing that to you when it comes in, is I ordered a titanium uh, pot, basically that's large enough to put the stove inside. And uh, I could throw this in there as well. But the point is, uh, the, the, the pot that I ordered is, is, again, it's titanium, so it's lightweight and it's safe to cook in. 
Okay, now, <laughs> uh, there's pros and cons to titanium. Uh, sure, it's more expensive, but uh, it's a 1.6 liter unit. Uh, you've got both a, a pot and a pan, and the overall price was under $50, which I think is pretty good, because that's a large uh, titanium pot. Anyway, I'll talk about that in the next video, probably, but uh, for now, I'm going to stand up because my feet are killing me. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got going on here. All right, it's uh, starting to bubble up a little bit. Now, I don't know how we're doing for time. Here. Okay, there we go. Should have done that in the first place. But uh, I expect it'll probably be about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes before this comes to uh, a rolling boil. Yeah. Now, some people may take issue with the fact that the flame or the the burner itself is more than what many considered uh, about an inch above the flame being the ideal positioning for the pot but one thing i can tell you is for some reason with this unit being as high up above the flame or above the uh, the spirit burner it it cooks just as fast and i've done this before it cooks just as fast as spirit burners where you're an inch above with your pot. So uh, I'll just let you know that right now. Uh, it, it still doesn't take too long for it to come to a, a full rolling boil. Now, don't know how long it's going to take here. Still waiting. <laughs> but, uh, and even if it takes a little bit longer, I'm not a whole lot worried about that but uh, uh, I, I'll be honest with you I won't even know exactly how long it took until I edit the videos later so uh, here let's get my face back into view here pardon me <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I won't know until I do the editing later uh, and I'll be able to see the actual amount of time and I'll post that uh, in the video by the time you see the video you'll know how long it took precisely for this to come to a boil so uh, Anywho, uh, I'm hearing it. Okay, yeah, it's starting to bubble up pretty good. But it's not quite up to a rolling boil yet. And I'm going to try uh, to bring the, the pot up there. The problem is by the time I get it up there, it'll probably not be a rolling boil anymore. You can either take my word for it. Many of you that have seen my videos before know that you probably can take my word for it. Uh, but I'm going to try to show you, you know, put this at an angle where you can actually see the water boiling. Uh, let me see what it's doing here. Okay. Just a little bit longer. And pardon me for standing up. I, I just, uh, my feet are kind of having a hard time staying in this squatted position for extended periods of time. Uh, well, I, I'm actually going to be, well, on October 8th, I'll be 56 years old so <laughs> uh, by the time you all see this video uh, you think here I may already be 56 I'm not sure so anyway okay here we go it's to a rolling boil okay yeah okay I'm gonna try to I'm gonna probably end up dumping some of this out but I want to get you to see that it's a good rolling boil so I'm gonna have to be quick here I don't know if you saw that but anyway uh, I think you get you get the gist here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the flame out and I will be cutting the camera here because I'm going to show you uh, me using this as a wood-burning stove so one thing I didn't mention is something I do like about this and I'm gonna move up a little bit closer to the camera here for you got this little tab here on now this is uh, basically designed to where you can uh, adjust the heat okay but also it's what I use to snuff the flame out okay it's a lot easier than trying to blow it out with alcohol that ain't easy to do so so here we go I'm gonna put it out and one thing I noticed is you can't get it in straight you got to turn it at an angle and then just set it on there like that anyway I think you all saw that work I hope I wasn't in front of it. <laughs> I may have been, but uh, if you didn't see that, turn this at an angle, and it'll go through that slot or that hole there. Okay. 
Uh, you won't be able to do it this, well, it'll kind of fit that way, but it certainly won't this way. So you just turn it a little bit. I've seen a lot of people kind of give up on that and uh, <laughs> try, to, try to bring it in. Okay, it's a little bit warm. I've seen people try to do it this way. Well, I don't consider that safe. Yeah, you can do it, but you may burn your fingers. So just a little bit of a heads up there. It will go in if you just turn it kind of cat a corner and it slides right in and out. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of cut this for now and I'll be back in a little bit once that's cooled off enough for me to grab it and get some wood in there and start with wood. Okay, so we'll see you in just a little bit. All right, there we have it. Stick this in there. Trying to keep out of the camera here so y'all can see me. All right, folks, I'm back, and here goes. I have uh, just set the water on there. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on like that. Well, here, put it on the right way. And let's make sure the fire's still going. Yep, still going. I'm gonna try to keep it going. So, I may throw some background music here, <laughs> in here, uh, uh, because all we're doing is we're kind of watching a fire burn slowly and uh, waiting for water to boil, kind of like watching grass grow or watching paint peel off the walls. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let this go and we'll, we'll see how long it takes for it to come to a boil. Now I'm, I'm moving, uh, pardon me if I turn my back to you because uh, I gotta kinda keep an eye on it from the front. Now, if I was doing this on my own, <laughs> I'd have this opening facing me, but uh, I want you all to see what's going on inside. So uh, I'm kind of moving away from the camera here or, or out of camera view uh, just so I can kind of keep an eye on it. And occasionally what I'll do is I'll feed some wood in through here uh, to keep the flames going. Uh, but don't want to do it too often because you don't want to choke the fire out either. Uh, now, this does have a good windshield on most of the sides which when you're burning wood uh, sometimes could uh, make it a little bit difficult to get the fire going uh, it's not like a lot of your wood stoves which have a lot more openings the problem with those is a lot of times they uh, they just don't well they'll blow out with stronger winds but uh, anyway we got her going here pretty good and I'd be surprised if I see any boiling going on or yeah it's it's got a ways to go there I got kind of a, a thin piece here. I'm going to see if I can keep it from falling out. That ought to catch pretty good. And the odd thing about the odd thing about a lot of these wood burning stoves is uh, you don't really worry too much about the length of the pieces of wood that you put in there because uh, it's actually good if it's a little bit longer because you can just keep shoving it in there as it burns out. Uh, or as the embers fall into the stove, so you can keep feeding it. Okay. Want to try to even the flames out a little bit so that it's burning uh, on all sides pretty evenly. One thing I'll say, when you're using a wood-burning stove, it's a little bit harder to listen uh, for when the boil starts because uh, you hear the crackling of the wood and it, you might get it confused with the boiling of the water. So uh, 
the difference with the alcohol burner, I could actually hear when it was coming to a boil. Now, when it comes to a good rolling boil, I'll be able to hear that, but uh, I won't necessarily know when it just starts boiling. So I'll be taking peaks every now and then just to get an idea how we're doing. So sit tight, I'll be right back. Well, I think the point's been proven that it can be used as a wood-burning stove. So you basically got a lot of flexibility with this, uh, this stove. Uh, now, I am going to put a link below uh, for the uh, Alox or Alox, I don't know how you pronounce it, but the Alox wood-burning stove kit, uh, or the seven-piece cook kit, rather. Uh, and again, like I said, it comes with everything that you saw here. Uh, it runs, I believe it was around $50, okay? So it's not exactly the cheapest, but you end up with a stove, a pot, uh, a pan, a, uh, a spirit burner, and a pouch. So you're not doing too bad. And it is all compact. It all fits into, well, here, I'll show you when I put it up. You'll see how small this comes down to. Uh, I think you may have seen that when I opened it up. But uh, anyway, uh, if I don't come back, I want to thank you all for watching. Please uh, share, subscribe, and like. And uh, we do appreciate any comments that you might have. Uh, kind of introduce yourselves to us, and uh, it helps us uh, maybe learn a thing or two every now and then. So uh, anyway, I want to thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.